Welcome back, everyone, to SuperCloud 2, live here in Palo Alto, our studio, where we're doing a live stage performance and virtually syndicating it out around the world. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, my co-host with theCUBE here. We've got Kit Colbert, the CTO of VM. We're doing a keynote on cloud chaos, the evolution of super cloud architecture. Kit, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me back. It's great to be here for super cloud 2. And so we're going to dig into it. We're going to do a Q&A. We're going to let you present. You got some slides. I really mm -hmm. want to get this out there. It's a really compelling story. Do the presentation and then we'll come back and discuss Take it away. Yeah, well thank you. So we had a great time <clears throat> at the original SuperCloud event. Since then, been talking to a lot of customers and uh, started to better formulate some of the thinking that we talked about last time. So let's jump into it. just a few quick slides to sort of set the tone here. So if we go to the, the next slide, uh, what that shows is the journey that we see customers on today going from what we call cloud first into this phase that many customers are stuck in called cloud chaos. And where they want to get to, and this is a term customers have actually used, we didn't make this up, we heard it from customers, this notion of cloud smart, right? Uh, how do they use cloud more effectively, uh, more intelligently? Now, <clears throat> if you walk through this journey, customers start with cloud first. They usually select a single cloud that they're going to standardize on. And when they do that, they have to build out a whole bunch of functionality around that cloud. Things you can see there on the screen, disaster recovery, security, how do they monitor it or govern it. Like these are things that are non-negotiable. You've got to figure it out. And typically what they do is they leverage solutions that are specific for that cloud. And that's fine when you have just one cloud, but if we build out here, what we see is that most customers are using more than just one. They're actually using multiple, not necessarily 10 or however many on the screen, but this is just uh, as an example. And so what happens is they have to essentially duplicate or replicate that stack they've built for each different cloud, and they do so in a kind of a siloed manner. And this results in the cloud chaos term that, that we talked about before. And this is where most businesses out there are. They're using two, maybe three public clouds. They've got some stuff on-prem, and they've also got uh, some stuff out at the edge. This is apps, data, et cetera. So this is the situation. This is sort of that cloud chaos. So the question is, how do we move from this phase to cloud smart? And this is where the architecture comes in. This is why architecture, I think, is so important. <clears throat> it's really about moving away from these single cloud services that just solve a problem for one cloud to something we call a cross-cloud service, something that can support a set of functionality across all clouds. And that means not just public clouds, but also private clouds, edge, et cetera. And when you evolve that across the board, what you get is this sort of super cloud, <laughs> this notion that we're talking about here, where you combine these cross-cloud services in many different categories. You can see some examples there on the screen. This is not meant to be uh, a complete set of things, but just examples of what can be done. So this is sort of the transition and transformation that we're talking about here. And I think uh, the architecture piece comes in both for the individual cloud services, as well as that super cloud concept of how all those services come together. Great presentation, thanks for sharing. If you could pop back to that slide on the, on the cloud chaos one, I just want to get your thoughts on something there. This is like the layout of the stack. So this slide here that I'm showing on the screen that you presented, okay, take us through that complexity. This is the one I want to live. That looks like a <laughs> spaghetti code mix. Yes. Um, so do you turn this into a super cloud stack, right? Is that- Well, I think it's, a, it's an evolving state that, like let's take one of these examples like security. So instead of implementing security individually in different ways using different technologies, different tooling for each cloud, what you would do is say, hey, I want a single security solution that works across all clouds, right? A concrete example of this would be a secure software supply chain. This is probably one of the top ones that I hear when I talk to customers. How do I know that the software I'm building is truly what I expect it to be and not something that some hacker has gotten into and, and polluted with malicious code? And what they do is that typically today, their teams have gone off and created individual secure software supply chain solutions for each cloud. So now they could say, hey, I can take a single implementation and just have different endpoints. It could go to Google or AWS or on-prem or wherever have you, right? So that's the sort of architectural evolution that we're talking about. You know, one of the things we hear, Dave, you have on theCUBE all the time, and when we, when we talk privately with customers who are asking us like, what, what's going on? They have the same complaint. I don't want to build a team, a dev team for that stack. So if you go back to that slide again, you'll see that that illustrates 
the tech stack for the clouds and the clouds at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So the number one complaint we hear, and I want to get your reaction to that, is I don't want to have a team to have to work on that, so I'm going to pick one and then have a hedge secondary one yep. as a backup. Yep. Here, that's one, that's <laughs> four, got, five, yeah, eight, ten, ten environments. Um, that's going to be the reality. So what's the technical answer to that? Yeah. Well, first of all, let me just say, this picture is, again, not totally representative of reality oftentimes because while that picture shows a solution for every cloud, oftentimes that's not the case. Oftentimes it's a line of business going off, starting to use a new cloud. They might solve one or two things, but usually not security, usually not some of these other things, right? So I think from a technical standpoint, where you want to get to is, yes, that sort of common service with a common operational team behind it that is trained on that, that can work across clouds. And that's really, I think, the important evolution here is that you don't need to replicate these operational teams, one for each cloud. You can actually yeah. have them more fo focused across all those clouds. Yeah, in fact, we were commenting on the opening today. Dave and I were talking about the benefits of the cloud. It's heterogeneous, which is a good thing, but it's complex. Mm -hmm. There's skill gaps and yep. skill required. But at the end of the day, self-service of the cloud and the elastic nature of it makes it the benefit. Mm -hmm. So if you try to create too many common services, you lose the value of the cloud. So what's the trade-off in your mind right now as customers start to look at, okay, identity, maybe I'll have one single sign-on. Yeah. That's an obvious one, other ones. Yep. What are the areas people are looking at from a combination, <clears throat> common set of services? Where do they start? What's yep. the choices? What are some of the trade-offs? Because you can't do it everything. No, it's a great question. <clears throat> so that's actually a really good point. And um, as, I, answer your question, before I answer your question, the important point about that, as you saw here, you know, across cloud services or the set of cross cloud services, the things that comprise a super cloud, at least in my view, the point is not necessarily to completely abstract the underlying cloud. The point is to give a business optionality and choice in terms of what it wants to abstract. And I think that gets to your question, is how much do you actually want to abstract from the underlying cloud? <clears throat> now, what I find is that typically speaking, cloud choice is driven at least from a developer or app team perspective, by the best of breed services. What higher level application type services do you need? A database or AI, you know, ML systems for your application? And that's going to drive your choice of the cloud. So oftentimes, businesses I talk to want to allow those services to shine through. But for other things that are not necessarily high, highly differentiated and yet are absolutely critical to creating a successful application, those are things that you want to standardize. Again, like things like security, uh, the supply chain piece, uh, cost management, like these things you need to, and you know, things like COGS become really, really important when you start operating at scale. So those are the things you, yeah. that I, I see people wanting to focus on. So there's a maturity model. Yes. Right? And we heard of earlier from Walmart, who's fairly you know, advanced, mm -hmm. but at the same time, their super cloud is pretty immature. So what are you seeing in terms of super cloud Momentum, yeah. cross-cloud momentum, what's the starting point for yeah. customers? So it's interesting, right, on that, that three-tier journey that I talked about, this cloud smart notion, is that is adoption of what you might call a super cloud or um, uh, architecture. And most folks aren't there yet, even the really advanced ones, even the really large ones. And I think it's because of the fact that we as an industry are still figuring this out. We as an industry did not realize this sort of cloud chaos state could happen, right? We didn't, I think most folks thought they could standardize on one cloud and that'd be it. But as time has shown, <clears throat> that's simply not the case. As much as one might try to do that, that's not where you end up. So I think there's two, there's two things here. Number one, for folks that are early in to the cloud and now are in this cloud chaos phase, we see the path out through standardization of these cross cloud services through adoption of this sort of super cloud architecture. But the other thing I think that's particularly exciting, because I talked to a number of, of businesses who are not yet in the cloud chaos phase, they're earlier on in the cloud journey. And I think the opportunity there is that they don't have to go through cloud chaos, they can actually skip that whole phase if they adopt this super cloud architecture from the beginning. And I think being thoughtful around that is really the key here. It's interesting, because we're going to hear from Ionis Pharmaceuticals later. Mm -hmm. And they, yes, there are multiple clouds, but they, the multiple clouds are largely separate. Mm -hmm. And so it's a business unit using that. So they, they're yep. not in cloud chaos, but they're not tapping the advantages that you could get for best of breed across those business units. So, to your point, they have an opportunity to actually build that architecture or take advantage of those cross-cloud services prior to reaching cloud. Well, I'd, actually, you know, I'd love to hear from them if, because you say they're not in cloud chaos, but are, are they, I mean, oftentimes I find that 
each BU, each line of business may feel like they're fine yes, in and of exactly themselves. Right. Yes. But when you look at it from an overall company perspective, they're like, okay, things are pretty chaotic here. I don't have standardization. I don't, you know, like, <clears throat> again, security compliance, these things, especially in many regulated industries, become huge problems when you're trying to run applications across multiple clouds, but you don't have any of those company-wide standardization. Well, this is a point. So they have a, a big deal with AstraZeneca, who's got this huge ecosystem. Mm -hmm. They want to start sharing data across those ecosystems, and that's when they will, you know, that cloud chaos will be, you know, come, <laughs> come to fore, you would think. Uh, but I, I, I want to get your take on something that Bob Muglia said earlier, which okay. is he kind of said, hey, Dave, you guys got to tighten up your definition a little bit. So he said a super cloud is a platform that provides programmatically consistent services hosted on heterogeneous cloud providers. So mm -hmm. you know, thank you, that was nice and simple. Yep. However, others in the community, we're going to hear from Dr. Nelu Mihai later, says, no, no, wait a minute. It's got to be an architecture, not a platform. Where mm -hmm. do you land on this architecture yeah. V platform thing? I look at it as, um, I don't know if it's, you call it maturity or just kind of a time horizon thing. But for me, when I, when I hear the word platform, I typically think of a single vendor. A single yep. vendor provides this platform. That's kind of the beauty of a platform is that there is a simplicity, usually consistency to it. They did the architecture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, well, there's obviously architecture behind it. It has to be. But you as a customer don't necessarily need to deal with that. Now, I think one of the opportunities with SuperCloud is that it's not going to be or there is no single vendor that can solve all these problems. It's got to be the industry coming together as a community, uh, interoperating, working together. And so that's why for me, I think about it as an architecture, uh, that there's got to be these sort of well-defined categories of functionality. There's got to be well-defined interfaces between those categories of functionality to enable modularity, to enable businesses to be able to pick and choose the right sorts of cross-cloud services and then weave those together into an overall super cloud. Okay, so you're not pitching necessarily the, the platform. You're saying, hey, we have an architecture that's, that's open. I go back to something that Vittorio said on August 9th with the first super cloud. Mm -hmm. Cause, because as well, remember we talked about abstracting, but at the same time giving developers access to those primitives. Yes. So he said, and this is, I think your answer sort of confirms this, I, I want to have my cake, eat it too, and not gain weight. <laughs> <laughs> right, well I think that's where the, the platform aspect can eventually come. After we've gotten aligned architecture, you're going to start to naturally see some vendors step up to take on some of the remaining complexity there. So I do see platforms eventually emerging here, but I think where we have to start as an industry is around aligning, okay, what does this definition mean? What does that architecture look like? How do we enable interoperability? And then we can take the next Because it depends too, because I would say Snowflake has a, a, a platform and they've just defined the architecture, but we're not talking about infrastructure here, mm -hmm. obviously. We're talking well, I think about the, the Snowflake uh, talks about, what he talks about security and data, you're going to start to see the early movement around areas that are very spanning oriented. Yep. And I think that's the beginning of the trend. And I think there's gonna be a lot more, I think on the infrastructure side, and to your point about the platform architecture, that's actually a really good thought exercise because it actually makes you think about what you're designing in the first place. And that's why I want to get your reaction well, to the quote. I just from, have to interrupt because later on you're going to hear from Nir Zook of Palo Alto Network. He says architecture and security, historically they don't go hand in hand because it's just a big mess. <laughs> it depends <laughs> on if you're whacking the mole or you're actually <laughs> proactively building something. Well, Kid, I want to get a reaction from a quote from someone in our community who said about SuperCloud, you know, the, the SuperCloud's great. Um, there are issues around computer science rigors and customer requirements. Mm -hmm. So there's some issues around the science itself as well as not just listen to the customer because if that's the case, we'd have a better database, a better Oracle, sure. right? So, but there's other, there's tech, tech involved, new tech. Yeah. Um, we need an open architecture with universal data modeling, mm -hmm. uh, inter interconnecting among them. Um, connectivity is a part of security. And then once we get through that gate, figuring out the technical, the data, and the customer requirements, mm -hmm. um, they say SuperCloud should be a loosely coupled platform with open architecture, plug and play, specialized services, ready for um, optimization, automation that can stand the test of time. What's your reaction to that, that sentiment? Uh, you like uh, it? Is that, does yeah, that no, sound broadly good? aligns with my thinking, I think, um, and what I see from talking with customers as well. I mean, I like the, again, the, <clears throat> you know, listening to customer needs, prioritizing those things, focusing on some of the connective tissue networking and, and data and some of these aspects. Talking about the open architecture, the interoperability, those are all things I think are absolutely critical. And then, yeah, like I think at the end. On the computer science side, do you see some science and engineering 
things that need to be engineered differently? We heard no. databases are radically going to change and that are inadequate for the new architecture. What are some of the things that, are from a science standpoint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the more academic research type things. Or, te or tech, you know, more <laughs> yeah. better tech, or is it? Yeah, look, <clears throat> absolutely. I mean, I think that there's a bunch around, certainly around the data piece, around, um, you know, there's issues of data gravity, data mobility. Uh, how do you want to do that in a way that's performant? There's definitely issues around security as well. Like, how do you en enable, like, trust in these environments? There's got to be some sort of hardware root of trust and, you know, a whole bunch of, um, uh, various types of aspects there. <clears throat> um, so a lot of work still to be done. Yes, I think so. And, and that, that's why I look at this as this is not a one year thing <laughs> or, you know, it's going to be multi years. And I think, again, it's about all of us in the industry working together to come mm. to an aligned picture of what that looks like. So as like. the world's moved from private cloud to public cloud and now cross cloud services, super cloud, meta cloud, whatever you want to call it, how have you sort of changed the way engineering's organized, developers mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. approach the problem. Mm -hmm. Has it changed and how? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's funny. We at, at VMware are going through the same challenges of, uh, as our customers and, you know, any business, right? We use multiple clouds. We've got a big, of course, on-prem footprint. Um, you know, what we're doing is similar to what I see in many other customers, which you, you, you see the evolution of a platform team. And so the platform team is really in charge of trying to develop a lot of these underlying services to allow our lines of business, our product teams, to be able to move as quickly as possible, to focus on the building mm -hmm. while we help with a lot of the operational overheads, right? We maintain security, compliance, all these other things. Um, we also deal with, uh, yeah, just making the developer's life as simple as possible. So they do need to know some stuff about you know, each public cloud that they're using, the, those public cloud services. But at the same time, we can abstract a lot of the, the details that don't need to be in. So I think this sort of delineation or separation, I should say, between the underlying platform team and the product teams is a very, very common pattern. You know, I noticed the four layers you talked about were observability, infrastructure, security, and developers on that slide. Mm -hmm. The last slide you had at the top, mm -hmm. that was kind of the abstraction, key areas yes. that you guys at VMware. Those are just are some at. groupings that we've come up with, but and we, we well, love and to I, debate them. You I, know? I noticed data is in every one of them. Yeah, right? so yep. It's data not like, so, so yep. back to the data questions that security is called out mm -hmm. as a pillar. Mm -hmm. Observability is just kind of watching everything, but it's all pretty much data driven. Of the four layers mm -hmm. that you see, I, I take that as areas that you can standardize, consistently rely on yeah. to have standard services. Yes. Which one do you start with? What's the, is there yeah. an order of operations? Well, that's, I mean. Because <laughs> I think infrastructure is number one, but yet observability, you need to know what's going on. Yeah, well, can... it really, it's highly dependent. Again, it depends on the, the business that we talk to. And what, I mean, it really goes back to, what are your business priorities, right? And <clears throat> we have some customers who uh, may want to get out of a data center. They want to evacuate the data center. And, um, and so what they want is then consistent infrastructure so they can just move those applications up to the cloud. They don't want to have to refactor them. And we'll, we'll do it later, but there's an immediate and sort of urgent problem that they have. Uh, other customers I talk to, you know, security becomes top of mind, or maybe compliance because they're in a regulated industry. So those are the sort of services they want to prioritize. So I would say there is no single right answer, no one size fits all. The, the point about this architecture is really around the optionality of it, is it allows you as a business to decide what's most important and where you want to prioritize. How about the deployment models kit? Mm -hmm. Do, does a customer have that flexibility from a deployment model standpoint or do I have to you know, approach it a specific way? Can you address that? Yeah, I mean, in deployment models, you're talking about how they, so how for they instance, consume. Yeah, running a, a control plane in the cloud and, and, and communicating elsewhere yep. or having yep. a single global instance or instantiating yeah. that instance. And so that's places. a good point, actually. And you know, the, the white paper that we released back in August um, the, around this sort of concept, the cross-cloud service, this is some of the stuff we, we need to figure out as an industry. So, you know, when we talk about a cross-cloud service, we can mean actually any of the things you just talked about. It could be a single instance that runs, let's say, in one public cloud, but it supports all of them. Or it could be one that's multi-instance and that runs in each of the clouds and that customers can take dependencies on whichever one depending on what their use cases are. Or that even going further than that, there's a type of cross-cloud service that could actually be instantiated even in an air-gapped or offline environment. And we have many, many businesses uh, especially heavy, heavily regulated ones that have that requirement. So I think global. You know, don't forget global. Yeah. Regions. Yes. Locales. Yeah. There's all I mean, sorts of performance latency issues that can be concerned about. So most 
services today are the former. They're a single sort of instance or set of instances within a single cloud that support multiple clouds. But I think what we're doing and where we're going with you know, things like what we see with Kubernetes and service meshes and all these things will better enable folks to, to hit these different types of cross-cloud service architectures. So today, you as a customer probably wouldn't have too much choice, but where we're going, you'll, you'll see a lot more choice in the future. If you had to summarize for folks watching the importance of super cloud movement, multi-cloud, cross-cloud services, as an industry in because I'm always riffing on the whole old school network protocol stacks that got disrupted by TCP IP. <laughs> That's yeah. a little bit dated. We got people yep. on the chat that are like, you know, 20 years old that weren't even born then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thanks. So, but this is a, one of those inflection points that's once in a generation yeah. inflection point. I'm yeah. sure you agree. Mm -hmm. What scope the order of magnitude of the change and the opportunity around the marketplace, the business models, mm -hmm. the technology, and ultimately benefits to society? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, getting big yeah, 10 there. seconds. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, look, so I think, I think it is. Um, what we're seeing is uh, really the, the, the next phase of what you might call cloud, right? That this notion of delivering services, the way, the way they were, they've been packaged together traditionally by, by the hyperscalers is now being challenged. And what we're seeing is really opening that up to new levels of innovation. And I think that will be huge for businesses because it will help meet them where they are. Instead of needing to contort the business to, to you know, make it work with the technology, the technology will support the business and where it's going, give people more optionality, more flexibility, in order to, to get there. And I think in the end, for us as individuals, it will just make for better experiences, right? You can get uh, better performance, uh, better interactivity, you know, given that devices are so much of what we do and so much of what we interact with all the time, this sort of flexibility and optionality will fundamentally be better for us as individuals and our experiences. And we're seeing that with chat, GTP, everyone's talking about just early days. There'll be more and more of things like that that are next gen, like. Absolutely. Obvious, like wow, that's a fall out of your chair. It'll moment. be the next wave of innovation that's unleashed. All right, Kit Colbert, thanks for coming on and sharing and exploring the super cloud architecture, cloud chaos, the cloud smart. There's a transition progression happening and it's happening fast. This is the super cloud wave. If you're not on this wave, you'll be driftwood. That's a Pat Gelsinger quote on theCUBE. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with more super cloud coverage here in Palo Alto after this break. <laughs>